All right, let's try this again. All right, so what we've got here is clearly just a big brown box. Came in an even bigger brown box. Brown box also contains some new tires. Two of them to be exact. We'll be using those with these tubes for now. What could be in the box? Well, wheels, of course. So, let's open these up. So these are the Mercury Wheels S5. Looks like we got some rim tape in here too. We'll want to hold on to that. I'm very tempted to explore tubeless. All right, we'll want to hold on to this since I have a 10 speech mono cassette and it actually needs that spacer. Just the one, the Shimano cassette I'll be using, um, it's actually behind the camera right now. Um, it is the Ultegra CS6700. And I've already got this on my direct drive smart trainer. Sadly, I won't be able to get these wheels out too soon. Um, we just had more snow here today in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it's not even the snow that's the issue, it's that it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's also cold and froze. So it's becoming very quickly a solid block of ice. That's not great even with 32 mil tires. Now my e-bike here that has 45 mil tires, eh, can handle pretty well. Still might slip a little, but that's what happens when you bike here in Wisconsin. Ooh, that's much lighter than I thought. Oh, nice. <laughs> so these are 50 mil depth carbon fiber Mercury S5 disc wheels. and set up for center lock disc brakes, which I also had. Um, they might, or no, they, I did, they were also in the bigger box. I ordered it all off of competitivecyclist.com. Um, not a sponsor, just found these guys for 778. And I was going to get ICANN Cycling's aero wheels but for eight dollars more, I don't know, I'm more willing to take a chance on something I've at least heard a little bit of before, other than just being the cheap Chinese carbon wheels, which I've heard great things about the ICANs, um, and I've actually been eyeing them up for well over a year now. Um, just hadn't pulled the trigger yet. So we get behind the camera so we can do a nice close-in look here. It's a nice matted down, very subtle finish. First glance looks like very nice hubs on it too. And from the specs on the website, it said that they were Mercury's own hubs. And so this Mercury is out of Utah. I don't remember exactly where, it might have been Park City, uh, but it's out of, yeah, either Park City or Ogden. One of those two, it really stands out. Um, but so they're made here in the United States which was also kind of a, a nice thing drawing to them. All right, so that was clearly the front. Now we've got the rear.
So this is a four pole hub. So it should be a little bit better than I think my current specialized axis rims are three pole. Um, either way, they're still excellent rims. The ones that came right on the specialized Roubaix. It is the base model, but that was, you know, budgetary reasons. And honestly, the 10 speeds on the Tiagra, it was a huge jump from my uh, Shimano Claris 8 speed. And I like it. it. Hydraulic disc brakes, nice feel to it. 10 speeds is still pretty, pretty good. And ultimately I knew I was gonna be upgrading the wheels so the DT Swiss that come on the Sport really didn't matter a whole lot to me. The 105 kinda of would have been nice, but honestly, if you don't have it now and you didn't have it before, you probably won't notice the difference. So there's that. Um, also you can change out your cassette to take over a lot of that gearing, uh, specializing for things like speed on the flats, climbing, like, or a nice, well-balanced one, which is actually what the Tiagra rear sprocket or rear cassette is. It's well-balanced, does well on the hills, well on the flats. And I mean, I'm not a small guy, so I'm really not too concerned about an extra speed. An extra gear going up hills might be nice, but again, that can be fixed through switching out cassettes, which is honestly really easy. You could do it on the side of the road, wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, you never know. Call up a friend to come bring one. All right. So now that we have unboxed these, I'll bring out the rear on my current wheel, which I've also got this uh, muck off disc cover. Keeps dust off and I've got one on my front wheel on the trainer too. Keeps sweat out of all, all of your mechanicals that are up there. Keeps sweat off the discs, off the pads. It's just, it's nice to have. Keeps dust off too, which is, and I think they're $30. I'm sure you can get other ones elsewhere, or if you're good at knitting, you can just make them. They're just discs that Velcro together. So this is the Shimano HG Tiagra cassette. So it's the CH or CS HG 600. And overall, it's nice. It's It's a really well-balanced cassette. Great for starting off on, great for getting used to a carbon road bike. But take the Altegra out. Living here in Southeast Wisconsin, we don't have a ton as far as hills or mountains. You have to get pretty far out of the city to really see anything that goes too far up, aside from the bluffs right on Lake Michigan. And even those you can pretty well skip. Because, like, I live in the southern part of downtown. I can just go right up the lakefront. And unless I want to go further up the Oak Leaf Trail and head north, I can skip pretty much anything I want to for climbing. So just as a comparison here, and I'm trying to make sure, it seems like it got bumped a little loose since I put it back in. So you can see a pretty, pretty decent change in gearing. Not too bad, but Good size difference. Uh, gives you a little bit more on the high end for the gears and a smaller low gear, which is this guy back here, um, which is a 34 tooth on the Tiagra, and I think it's a 28 on the, on the Altegra. Yes, 28. 
The biggest gear on the bottom here is both 11 on each. So, overall, really nice. I'd definitely recommend making the jump to one of these Altegra cassettes because the 10 speeds, they fit perfectly on the Tiagra. They give you a nice solid weight advantage. You can kind of see in there. Nice solid weight advantage. There's a good range of them where you can actually have an even smaller um, an even smaller gear on the back. And I think these are I think I got this one for like $60. Um, but I think they're usually around $70, $75. So it's a pretty inexpensive upgrade to get you some a good speed upgrade. Now your climbing may be affected if you find yourself using the smallest gear fairly often. You might want to stick with this, potentially see if you can get something bigger than 34. But without going to a mountain bike sprocket cassette, you know, which you're not really going to get because the chains work differently. Um, this is about as low of a big gear as you'd want. But the Specialized Axis Sport wheels, well built, well crafted. They're actually pretty lightweight for aluminum wheels, um, which is nice. They definitely can handle weight. Um, I'm down below 250 now, but at my biggest, I was probably over 300, 310 or so. These put up with the abuses of cracked roads, bad paths, dirt, gravel, just solid, solid wheels. And the Roubaix Pro tires, also very nice. Um, and they are still pretty aero, even for being 28 mil tires. So gives you a nice, nice aero profile there, but definitely not deep section as a comparison. 50 mil. And I think these are 30. Still pretty, fairly deep, uh, but also they don't have to have a rim brake track on there, which actually kind of makes them look a little sleeker. But, and the old matte black finish is real nice. But let's get to uh, putting the pieces together here. So I'll actually get in shot here for a little bit. Just, it's easier to work on the ground better on my back. And it doesn't freak my dog out as much, who is sitting behind me watching supervising. So we will want a torque wrench. That's a rotary tool. It's like tools. Pretty inexpensive. And it's got most everything you'll want to work on at home. And it's even got a little flat kit too. Um, like these ones are made in Taiwan. Solid, sturdy, steel. I like it. Um, we're not going to be putting these onto my bike just because it is set up for the indoor trainer right now. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to make a follow-up video of putting these actually onto my road bike. Um, I'm sure at some point the roads won't be covered in salt, snow, and ice. Um, and even then with the 32 mils, I may still just give it a try. On the paths, not on the roads. <laughs> the paths, you can take a, you can take a digger into the into the ground and not have to worry about somebody flying past on their car and hitting you. Um, I also just got this new torque wrench here. Um, I did not know it was going to be this big. 
but that is also kind of good. You can get good leverage and it goes up to, I think it's 220 Newton meters. So <laughs> it's pretty aggressive compared to my old one, which caps out at 15 Newton meters. Great for just about everything on your bike. And at 15 Newton meters, that is the torque spec for your through axles on most specialized carbon bikes and pretty much anything but the cranks cassette and i believe these center lock discs also are 40 newton newton meters i think the cranks are 35 so with those previously you just or i just took hand tighten it until i can't tighten it anymore so they might be broken but they still spin fine don't creak so for now you're just kind of crossing the fingers hope they're good so this is it actually comes not greased which is kind of nice um let's see i actually don't think i'm going to need this park tool bottom bracket tool and get my commuter shoes out of the way. Commuter bike shoes, like you're riding around on flats in the streets. They're, you team them up with some nice like road-ish, flat mountain bike type-ish pedals, um, but something that just lets like the grime and dirt and all that come right through the middle so you don't get everything all backed up. Um, I might go SPD on them at some point. I had that actually on my old road bike before I went to SPD SL, which is the road style clip pedals. But definitely not gonna <laughs> wear these on my commuter e-bike. Um, I'm actually still weary about riding them outside, but damn, they look pretty. <laughs> the other one already got scratched. The, uh, I don't know, pedal came loose. And it cocked sideways during a heavy climb, during a group ride on Swift, and was not ideal. Um, it also turned my ankle pretty hard, too. So. Things to keep, uh, be aware of. Tighten the bolts on your shoes. Most road shoes, they, or most bike shoes, they do have a torque rating for the bolts. Um, these Pearl Izumis are seven Newton meters per bolt, which is actually pretty tight. Tighter than obviously I did the first time uh, because one of them popped loose. <laughs> and cost the situation. Um, but check the tightness every once in a while. It's a good thing to do on pretty much anything on your bike. Uh, go through, check the tightness, um, reapply lube when you do take things out. Um, they come out easier the next time when you want to on purpose. It's going to rearrange here. I got too far into it. There we go. Yep. Oh, and it came a little loose too. Grease. A little bit of that goes a long way when you're working on stuff. And if you do hear a in the background, that is my dog, Zadie. She is watching me as I do this, supervising. All right, I'm making a mess. And so today we'll be using the RTMT 900. 
160 millimeter disc brakes. Um, I'm not sure if these are the four. Ah, that still works. Um, I was hoping I'd get lucky and get the uh, five arm ones. But. So, yeah. The ice freezer technology. I'm sure of what that does. I'm sure it has something to do with uh, cruising down a hillside at high speeds and uh, you want to break. You just can't do it. There. So, it's even got a little sticker here warning you. Uh, you know, try not to, don't get your finger grease on the brake rotor. It'll cause squeaking, grinding, all sorts of nastiness. Now, this is the first time I've actually um, installed brake rotors, so I'm trying to be extra cautious just based on what I've seen and heard. This is basically just very light application of grease. So that if slash when the rotors do need to come off, they're not completely like stuck. Now, like this is not a scientific way of doing it, but <laughs> what I'm doing is just kind of rotating it so a little bit of grease gets on most, if not all, of the threads. Um, might have to pause and continue later. Because I shoot. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's just there it is. Perfect. Um <laughs> it's starting to a little bit freak out there. I thought these came with the lock ring, and they do. It's back here, so I knew I at least had one. Um, I've got a second one on a different brake rotor that's over there. Um, it was supposed to be a six bolt to change out on my old wheel set because I still do plan on using them. But <laughs> now it showed up as a center lock. So that's fine. Um, ultimately, too, I don't think it's really worth trying to return at this point either. So I don't know. It was like a $25 router. Still Shimano, still nice. Um, My old wheels use a six bolt pattern instead of center lock. So, and you can get a center lock to six bolt adapter, but I, as far as I know, you can't get a six bolt to center lock adapter. Because where would the bolts go? All right, just very carefully. I try pretty much with anything to make sure it doesn't strip. Do a reverse 
turn to get it to set into the threads. This one doesn't seem to want to. Um, and also too, it's a different, so <laughs> it's not the, not the adapter I thought I would need. <laughs> so that is okay though. I believe then it's just this Shimano bottom bracket tool. Nope. Cassette tool. Even better. See, this is why it's nice to be able to get a, like a general tool kit. So a good way too to make to know that you're not cross threading is things you can hand tighten them almost all the way down with little to no resistance. The final part is just going to be when you actually torque it. Let's just make sure we're at 40 newton meters. All right. <laughs> and that's a quarter inch thread. <laughs> so like, it's kind of a good and bad thing that this thing is so giant. Um, there we go. Because like, <laughs> this is pretty effortless. Versus, grand, this doesn't, Work that high and I think it's a quarter inch adapter on the head uh, but either way like all right we've got contact and we're at 40 beautiful I kind of like that hub noise, <laughs> just as a comparison. It's, uh... Much quieter. And like, isn't that the whole part of getting new carbon wheels anyways is you know make them loud and proud and <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> but all right so as we're working on this I'm actually going to take the cover off of this wheel um, primarily because then I, I mean still want to be careful but you can be I can set the disc road against like my pants or grab onto the disc cover with less worry than if it was just hanging out All right. Well, we hit the recording limit of my camera, uh, which is, you know, like a lot of mirrorless or DSLR cameras. Um, 29 minutes, 58 seconds, I think is what it stops at. So I greased up 
the hub body here to fit the cassette on. Um, made sure that I have each of these platters in the proper position. And installing a cassette really, I don't know, it, it seems like one of those things that should be challenging, more challenging than it is, and scares off a lot of people who haven't done it before, including myself. Um, the last one I had to replace, I actually brought it into the shop. <laughs> now that I know how to do it, and like, I don't know. Um, I also didn't have all the right tools at that time, and it, it really was easier to have the shop do it. Plus, I didn't have a torque wrench. They did it when they were doing just overall, oops, um, like a whole spring tune-up. So, and they put the chain on too, which again, isn't horribly difficult, but it can be intimidating. You know, everybody's at a different comfortability level, especially with this stuff. Um, definitely before they get their first, like, big bike or real bike or whatever people want to call it. But like a road bike or a mountain bike. Something that, you know, a lot of, at least when I was a kid, if you had like a Huffy or a Schwinn from like Shopco or Walmart... Toys R Us, or like a Pacific, I think was another one of the big ones. Um, that's just what everybody had. And, you know, they weren't especially fancy, but, you know, it's kids' bikes. You end up growing out, out of them, but... There we go. And so parents don't really want to get anything overly fancy just knowing that like you will outgrow it um so with a lot of people once they get their first like real road bike or something that costs more than 200 dollars, honestly <laughs> they get cautious and rightfully so like this cassette that i'm putting on was 70 75 dollars i think is actually the msrp um so like that's like the price of the bike I had as a kid. And it's just this one part that came with all of the parts. You could ride that whole bike. And I did, you know, I was hit by a car on it. Pick the thing up, kick the tire back into shape and uh, rode it on home. It was only a mile home, so nothing too insane, but <laughs> yeah, on my way home from school, I was hit by another student. And just, I don't know. It's not an experience I would want on any of my current bikes. And I didn't really want it then either. I remember it still hurt. And like, it was a pretty low impact hit. Um, fresh snow on the ground driver wasn't paying attention, I had the right of way, and they came out, blew through a stop sign, ran into my back wheel and spun me out into the street. And then about a month later, same thing happened, um, only a block away from the house that I grew up at, and <laughs> it was on my brother's bike, so I couldn't ride mine, it had a bent back wheel frame was a little cracked you know but, uh, <laughs> it was fine I guess um, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody but anyways the point is though you want to do do things that will help you do preventive maintenance 
videos on YouTube's repair guides, all great helpful things uh, to make sure that you can keep your bike running for as long as possible and like a tube of bike grease or um, some tire levers, learning how to put your own tires on, like a tune-up at a shop is, I don't know, anywhere from like 40 to $200, depending on what you have done and what needs to be done, what shape the bike is in. Doing this kind of stuff at home, especially the more basic stuff, you can really save yourself a lot of money and you can roll that right back into the hobby, which is where you know, a lot of bikers and cyclists, where your money that you save ends up going right back into the hobby. Um, or you could potentially, theoretically, use it on other things. You know, get your boyfriend or girlfriend something nice, husband, wife, get your dog a toy, or, you know, new wheels. <laughs> nice tires. Riding specific socks, uh, storage jerseys, you know, list goes on. It's kind of the common thing with cyclists. And like, it doesn't have to be like a road cyclist either. Uh, mountain bikers are just as bad. Um, commuters try to, a lot of them claim to not to be that way, but like then you just find yourself getting like nicer long johns or uh, special shoes. Yeah, you know, a specific like fixed gear single speed bike. Like <laughs> it just it ends up just rolling back in. You have a budget for your bike stuff, and that budget stays the same no matter how much you end up saving. You just put it on different things. Um, so these wheels that I'll be trying out. It's my first set of Continentals. Ooh. Um, and these are the GP5000. So, I'm pretty excited. Um, a lot of people seem to like them. Um, I've pretty much always run the specialized brand tires. And so, like, I've got the Rube Pros on there right now. I think those are amazing, general, all around, like, spring summer fall tires um little bit for snow i don't really take that bike out in the snow too much um but great for gravel too uh but so instead of having these i believe these are called like laser etched tread you have actually a pretty consistent constant tread and then a flat center to help ease up on rolling resistance when you're on the road and a little bit of extra grip for when you're not on the road. Which of course the Rebe is named after the Paris Rebe race, which is notorious for its cobblestone sections. Um, rougher paths, roads, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. But what that does for a bike that's made for those kinds of things is for people who do want a bike that can kind of do it all. A little bit more robust, more endurance, slightly more upright. Um, the Specialized Roubaix that I have is incredibly aerodynamic. But it also has its future shock built into the handlebar, so it saves your wrists a little bit. Um, there's more compliance in the seat. It's very comfortable. You hit a bump and you don't just immediately feel it all, uh, but you still get enough of that road feel where you feel that you are riding. All right. Get the tube ready to seat in there. Now you actually want to put the tire on first and then run the tube in. Um, and it's nice to kind of get a little bit of air 
I might have put too much in. Uh, but a little bit of air just so that the tube can take some shape and sit into the rims. Running out of space. <laughs> uh, this is the downside of your bike room pain cave also being your home office. The bikes just don't get enough space, even though they get three quarters of the room, plus most, if not the entire closet, but not nearly enough space. All right. And before we get too far, make sure that's the sealed one. Make sure we're not. Perfect. We're like 11 and a half minutes. I'm actually going to just, I noticed that there was some stuff inside just from shipping. Um, on the interior of the rim and just want to make sure none of that gets in towards the tube. Also very important for running tubeless, I'm sure. I've never done it, so that might even be a... Oh, that's cool. You got the sign-off date. And person. I did not bring my phone up with me. That is fine. So we'll, this gives me a good opportunity to check for any cracks, bumps, kind of give the tire a quick once over too on not fully how true it is. Um, But just to make sure it's not completely bent out of shape. There. It's got a little bit of gunk. And I did, most of the reviews said that these weren't too bad, more challenging than stock wheels to mount tires, um, but not impossible. So, and most of that had to do with two bliss, which I guess would be from the hooks on them being, I'm guessing, non-folding and uh, like a non-folding bead and shaped. But here we are. I don't think I've ever had to use a tire lever on this side. <laughs> First time for everything. There we go. Okay, so just need a little bit of, a little convincing to get on there. Perfect. And a lot of wheels will have some form of logo right over the top of the valve hole. Just to make it a little easier to find this one happens to be on the opposite side of the big logo for Mercury. There we go. Just 
Make sure that doesn't slip back in. All right. And then we'll start working the tire onto the wheel. And I like to do opposite end away from the just set it. Um, opposite end directly away from the valve and try and work the tire like halfway into the wheel bed. So it can actually give you almost a little more leverage. Let's see if we can shoot. <laughs> caliper to and also I didn't measure it even just with a tape measure uh, but the specs say this is either a 17 and a half or 18 inch wide interior bed so for something like a 32 I'm not too surprised oh. I mean I'm not too surprised that it's tight for any wheel. I'm trying to also be careful not to catch the inner tube. the recording limit but oh, it was only right before I got the wheel on so now I'm gonna open the valve up as tight
tight fit too. Alright, alright. So with these being 32 mil, let's see, it does not, okay, there we are. One hundred and two PSI max, that seems aggressive. Oh, well, we're in my 28 mils at, what's on here, 95 PSI. So, oh, let's go at least get these things, get the bead seated. There we go. Right. Still working on some of it. And we're hoping not to get the big pop. <laughs> I do have a spare though, if that does happen. Oh, so that's 95 PSI. <laughs> it's, it's on there pretty tight. Um, also, I went with 60 mil valve stems. Kind of forgetting that the new wheels have a 50 mil depth. So now I can put my pump on there. But when it was completely flat, it would not. And I kind of had to take the fastener off just to make sure that I could um, attach the pump on just right. These are turning the right way. Rotation does matter.
and backwards. Well, good practice. So that is a good thing about keeping the rotors exposed while you do this, is you can match the rotation marker there, which also tells you which way the disc should face, um, with, oh, where'd it go? The rotation marker right there, which are facing opposite ways. So, learn from my mistake. I got too excited. <laughs> well, <sighs> just for the sake of this video, I'm probably going to edit this part out. I'm just going to move on.